Hey, it's Rob. And uh, I'm behind the camera again. The dogs are here. They are uh, willing to be healthy and bark at everybody and anything that they might imagine might be out there. So, <sighs> life with dogs. Today, we're going to talk about LED bulbs. All right, you've seen these all over the place. You know what they are. You find them at the hardware store. They're all over. Well, I got one that when I went downstairs and turned the light on, it was dead. So, I figure, rather than just toss it in the trash right away, how about we take it apart? See how this thing is made. Maybe see if we can figure out what's wrong with it. The dogs say yes, that's a good idea. These are uh, Fight Electric. I think I got these at the local hardware store. They're pretty much just the cheap Chinese brand. It's difficult to find anything that's going to be, you know, highly, uh, you know, unless you go to something like a Philips or one of the brand name bulbs, you're going to be paying less money for a cheaper bulb and it's going to have some issues with it. And that's just how it goes. Now, I already know kind of how this thing is put together. There's a board that's in here that sits right about here, and then there's an internal aluminum piece that acts as a heat sink to help draw away the heat. Um, evidently, it's not enough to keep these from dying prematurely. Uh, this one's, I guess, not premature. It's been in there for a couple years, but at the same point, there's no reason that these bulbs should last, you know, 10, 15 years. These are... Unless you're using substandard components or you're driving them beyond their rated tolerances or, you know, close to the edge. That's uh, often the case when you get into cheap products. So, I'm going to try and figure out how to take this apart without uh, destroying everything inside. So, we'll come back in a minute or two. All right, that's kind of fun. A little uh, power supply kind of thing in there. Hmm, and you can see the aluminum internal heat sink. But that's cracked, and now I can do a little bit of prying. You engage safety squints. actually something kind of satisfying about this. Alright, we got that. This part is glued on. Alright, I guess we'll figure out how to get that apart. Okay, managed to lift this off enough. These are not made to take apart. Oh my goodness. A little like peeling back a tin can, except it's aluminum or aluminium depending on where you live. Oh, 
That's a good sound. Get in there. By the way, this process is known as destructive. So, uh, you know, this is not going to go together and be a useful light bulb anytime soon. I just want to see what's inside. I have a basic idea of how these work, but there's a couple of different types. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Look at that. That's interesting. That's a whole lot of LEDs. I'm surprised. That's a lot more LEDs than I was considering, so... I don't know. Count them. Yeah, hold it closer. Did you count them? Okay. I'm going to stop here for a second and count them myself. I don't know about you, but I got 58. I could be wrong, but that seems to be about right. Um, they're a little asymmetrical, but I'm figuring that that's close enough. Anyway, 58. 58 of them. So these are probably the regular 3-volt LEDs. I know there's a couple of models that have each of these LEDs has three dies in it, so it's a 9-volt, but I think this one might be a little older. So we can take this apart here. Close, close, close. My guess is that these are all LEDs in series. And what's inside here... Oh, look at that. That's interesting. There's another plate here. Huh, okay. Well, that's going to be a bit of a pain, so let's... Alright, I'm going to mark these. Uh, hang on a second. Alright, just for my own sensibilities, I marked the gray one as the black, and the white one I just left alone. It's already got a little brown spot here. I'm guessing it's probably solder flux. Who knows? Uh, I'm going to desolder these two wires and um, pull the power supply out probably through this end it'll be easier but I'm going to guess that this is a pretty simple DC power supply that's based off of the mains voltage that just comes in and does a probably a full wave uh, full bridge full wave bridge rectifier full bridge rectifier and provides you know 140 volts DC more or less to drive these and these are all lit in series. My guess is that one of these LEDs failed and that's why it's not working. I haven't measured the voltage across here. We might do that a little bit later but you know for now let's just desolder. done with lead free solder. Higher temperature takes a little bit more to uh, defrock. Now uh, that's what those... Uh, it's also on an aluminum back plate, which means that it's sucking heat away quite quickly. Oh, that's a pain in the butt. Okay, one down. Somebody's probably walking a dog outside. I get that a lot. Dog, dogs barking at invisible bunnies or sounds they hear or shapes that they see moving across the street or, you know, whatever. They're just bored. They're easily bored. They want, they want more attention. 
There's never enough attention being paid to the dogs. They would like you to know that. Oh, this is a pain in the butt. Jeez! Are you kidding me? Alright. Do it the easy way. Oh, there's some internal plastic too. Huh. Alright. And there we go. Oh, that board's a little toasty. That's actually quite more uh, quite more complex than I had considered. Okay, had a little boof in the recording. Not sure uh, what happened there, but just a quick bit. This side, up to about here, is a straight DC or a straight uh, AC to DC converter power supply. It comes in in line voltage and creates a large DC voltage, probably around 140 to 170 volts, depending on your your line coming in. And it rectifies that into an AC. This capacitor is used to smooth it. 200 volt capacitor. That's a little low for what's going on in here. I mean, that could pretty easily fry, but then again, these are cheap. Uh, they're not really intended to be much of anything. This part, I'm pretty sure, is going to be a current driver, a little switching switch mode current driver. And you can tell it's the board's a little brown there. It's a little burned. So this might just be completely dead, but I'm not really sure. So, well, I don't want to keep this. This isn't really worth anything. It's just a completely crappy power supply. It's just interesting of how it's made. Huh, alright. This, when I went back and looked at it, I noticed there's these two, which look like they're LEDs that the phosphor has popped out on. Uh, I have to see if I can get a little bit better uh, better image on there, but uh, these are usually um, blue or ultraviolet LEDs internally, and then there's this phosphor coating that's on the top. It's this combination of phosphor and epoxy that's designed to let out um, quite a bit of light for the amount of current that's going in, and these can be driven to pretty high power. It's kind of amazing how much power these things can dissipate, which is why it's on this aluminum substrate. This board is done essentially on aluminum, on an aluminum base for maximum heat sinkage. It's kind of neat how these LEDs have come a long way in the past few years. Oh, 10 or so. Anyway, I'll see if I can get a better picture of these two, and uh, we'll go from there. I wanted to show you um, one of the LED pieces that popped off uh, under the microscope, but I'm having a really difficult time getting it centered um, because I'm using a different camera. I'm using a microscope camera and OBS Studio, and it's not quite working the way that I think it should be. But anyway, uh, if you an idea of this little pointy thing that is a very small brad <laughs> I think that's about a millimeter in diameter so you can get an idea of just how small this thing is 
It looks like what happened is the LED separated from its substrate completely. This is the this is upside down from how it's actually mounted. The the yellow stuff around the outside is um, like a clear epoxy with phosphor in it, and that's the part that glows. So I I just found that intriguing. I found a couple of these that had popped off, and this is the only one that is remaining from. Uh, the dogs romping around with their tails and knocking stuff off the table. But figured I'd show it to you anyway, and it looks like fun. Here's a close-up of one of the LEDs that blew apart in the lamp. Let's see if I can get a little bit better lighting on here. Uh, where are we? Try this and see if I can... I don't know, it's really hard to get any more light in there. Um, you can see the bond wire that's down on the sort of the lower right side of the that black not quite triangle or uh, not quite rectangle with the uh, cut off corners in the middle. Uh, it's pretty hard to see, but anyway, that's what it looks like after it blew up. That's one of the two. Uh, the other one is down here. That looks pretty much the same. But you can see how hot they got, how that material around it is baked. <laughs> baked so hard it cracked. And then you can see some of the uh, the substrate that's on here, how hot this got. That's, this is what the LEDs look like normally. Um, a little bit of a solder bead there from the assembly process. There's where the... Uh, one of the wires was connected. I mean, you, you can get an idea of just how hot this thing got. It's pretty crazy. But, you know, it's kind of, it, I guess it's not surprising considering what these go through. I mean, they're, they're inside of a light bulb and there's not a lot of heat dissipation coming from them. So there's bound to be, you know, failures that come. Here's a close up of the chip that's part of the power supply on the back. I'm, can actually read the numbers here a BP 28333 see if I can find what that is okay it turns out it's a BP 2833 and it's a non isolated buck offline LED driver and I could show you the uh, data sheet but you know you're probably not all that interested and if you are you can look it up yourself um, fairly simple it's an LED driver so there we go. That's what we know. Essentially, it's a constant current power supply that's a buck regulator. So the voltage coming in is, you know, 120 volts, or and then it goes through a bridge rectifier, gets to about 140 to 170, and then it uses that to light a string of LEDs. And it uh, relatively simple, relatively cheap, and that's why they're in these light bulbs. Okay, that's about it. Uh, this thing is pretty much toast, but that's okay. I mean, it was a dead bulb anyway. But the only thing salvageable was uh, this little dome, which is a nice light diffuser for certain kinds of LEDs. So I might end up using this in a project. If not, in the recycling bin it'll go. But good enough. All the rest of the bits, uh, plastic bits and the aluminum bits, well, except for this one that I missed, went in the recycling. That's going to get tossed. It's just not any good at all. So, all right. Thanks for watching. See you later.